Uh, you know, I see, you see it at every wedding, you know, the guy's up the front, he's got it all together. Yeah, it's cool, he's chatting with his mates and bridegrooms and then, so the, you know, the, the, the bridal party come down, he's all cool, then the bride appears at the back. And you can just see that moment when the eyes sort of fill up with tears and sort of trying to hold themselves together because this beautiful girl's coming down towards them. You know, with all, just every bride looks beautiful, don't they? Every bride looks beautiful on the day. And uh, just, 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 just losing it up the front there. Hey, that's how Jesus feels about you. You're his bride. I, was, uh, I had little, my little granddaughter, Krista Rose, sitting on my knee the other day. I said, Krista Rose, I love you. She said, Granddad, she said, I love you to the moon and back. What does that do in your heart, you know? And I want to tell you, Jesus loves you to heaven and back, all right? Is that cool? Jesus loves you to heaven and back. So, uh, you know, that's the sort of relationship he wants us to have with him. You know, there's things we experience in our own lives are all reflections of the incredible things that, that God wants us to have with him. You know, you sit a little granddaughter on your knee and... Uh, don't rush them. I mean, they'll get there, you know. That's, uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool. Amen. But, uh, you know, just the, the grandkids on your knee is a fantastic thing. And just think about how Jesus feels about you. You are so precious to him. You really are. And he loves to hear you say, oh, I love you, Jesus. And he said, oh, I love you to heaven and back. Yeah, is that cool? So uh, I thought that was a really cool thing. And uh, that's how he feels about his church. And finally, uh, uh, that's a bride to display his splendor, uh, an army to exert his dominion. And I'd just like to talk about that a little because I think the Lord wants to shift our thinking uh, as to who we are. Knowing who you are is really, really important. And uh, I just want to just share that a little this morning. It brings the confidence factor to you when you know who you are and what you possess and what God's given to you, especially in the way of authority. So Jesus said, I will build my church. The message version says, now I'm going to tell you who you are, really are. You're Peter, a rock. That's just a small stone. This is the rock, the massive rock outcrop, of course, which is Jesus, on which I will put together or build my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Now, some of the versions of the Bible read as if we've got these gates of hell sort of marching towards us. No, that's not a good picture. Hey, we are the ones who are on the offensive, rescuing people from a lost eternity. That's the correct picture, all right? We are in the ascendancy, not the other way around. The light always overcomes the darkness. The darkness cannot extinguish the light. We shall overcome. We shall see the victory. We shall see multitudes who are in the valley of decision, brought into a place of knowing the Lord Jesus, knowing a, a future and a hope and a destiny and a secure eternity with Jesus. So we are the ones who are storming the gates of hell not the other way around amen and so uh so that's not all you have complete and free access to god's kingdom keys to open any and every door no more barriers between heaven and earth earth and heaven a yes on earth is a yes in heaven and no on earth is a no in heaven that's the authority that is given to us and i just want to develop that thought a little this morning when jesus uh said to the disciples, I, I will build my church. The, the disciples, you have to understand, had no concept of church at that point. And there wasn't a church. They couldn't sort of go down the road and see a church. There wasn't a church at all. So what was their, what was their frame of reference? What, was the, what would be the thought that was in their minds when Jesus used this word, which was the word ecclesia? Now the ecclesia, let's remember that at this point in time, Jerusalem was under Roman occupation. Okay, they'd invaded the country, they'd established their own uh, rule over that nation. Now for them, the word ecclesia uh, and the job of Rome when they sent their soldiers in was to conquer a city. Once the city was conquered, they would bring in the ecclesia. So there'd be the proconsul and there'd be the governing body who would govern over the conquered city. Their purpose in governing that city was to make it just like Rome in its structure 
uh, in its laws, in its customs, and even in the thinking of the people. That was the job of the ecclesia. In the sense of a, of a city, the ecclesia would be like the elders of the city who were called out into the gates of the city to make judgments on major matters concerning the life of the city. And so this was the word that they would be working from. This is the worldview that they would have, that it was a governmental, yeah, a governmental uh, statement. Now, if we think about all the things that Jesus said, you will find he speaks a lot more about kingdom and about bringing heaven to earth, you know, the Lord's Prayer, that you will be done on